comics fans have had it pretty bad for quite a while now for the last i don't know two three years it just hasn't been very good and why hasn't dc comics made any real changes why haven't they gone out of their way to listen to their fans and actually give them what they've asked for perhaps dc comics fans are just assholes they're asking too much they're asking for things that are just unrealistic for dc comics or editorial staff their leadership to put into action Maybe DC fans are just the worst. Thankfully, there was recently a Reddit post asking, if you were in charge of DC Comics, how would you run it? Today, I'm going to go through this just a little bit. There are over 620 comments on this. A lot of suggestions on what DC Comics fans would actually like for DC Comics to do. I'm going to look at five of them that I thought were very interesting. And you can see some trends, some similarities between the people's responses. The first one we'll talk about is Trace Tong 3229. Five years with no comic events, no cancellations of any title in the first year, give writers a chance to make something good and compelling without interrupting their stories or messing with continuity. No resurrections of any dead characters. Of course, that is not new at all. DC Comics fans have been asking for years upon years now, let's slow down with the events because they're not really all that impactful and quite frankly, you're not very good at them anymore. And oftentimes, they do interrupt really good ongoing stories. Can we not forget what happened to Josh Williamson's Flash run when Tom King needed to write Heroes in Crisis? Next thing you know, you get Flash War, and Wally West is basically sent off to basically get massacred, murdered by Tom King for some pointless crisis that everyone hates nowadays. And that is kind of the way of life. And you'll also see in a lot of these comments, people are saying they want some stability with the creative teams, with the characters. Let's let things actually play out and not constantly change everything about the universe. How many universe-changing events have happened just within the last two or three years? Dark Knight's death metal. We've had, uh, you know, Crisis on Infinite Earths. All these things are happening. We're in Lazarus Planet right now, and they're basically all meaningless at this point. DC Comics can't even do a real reboot anymore because nobody trusts them. They really need to get their act together. They need to cut down on the events and really let some of their creators do some great things. We've seen what happened with Jeremy Adams. When he did his flash run, what happens to it? It's really building up some momentum. People are getting interest. Well, let's tie it into Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths for no reason and tell a pretty good story, at least for Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, but it actually just interrupted a really good flash story people actually wanted to read. Let's hear from the next responder. Magister Praesatorum says, I'm hardly an expert, but here's some things that I can think of. I take a lesson from manga and diversify the line. Have comics and genres other than superheroes. Also publish graphic novels that aren't just collected editions. Bring on good marketing teams to promote the comic books. Bring the single issue price down by one to two dollars. Try to get comics back on the newsstands. I'm sorry, that's not gonna happen. The new spinner rack is in fact digital comics. They're never gonna come back on the newsstand, but I understand the sentiment. Produce comics for all ages. Bring back the Elseworld imprint. Create a character Bible. Standardize a basic continuity across the board, especially for character histories. Also hire a continuity expert. We don't need everything dialed in, but there should be more coherence and consistency. Streamline communication between different creative editorial teams. Do a line of titles like World's Finest. Series technically set in the current continuity, but taking place in the Silver Bronze Age past. Producing comics, therefore, where the characters are at their most accessible and iconic forms and status quo. Have the group editors of each character family meet monthly with the EIC to keep everyone in the loop on what other teams are doing. Just think about that, that response right there. There's a lot of great suggestions. I'm going to key in on the stuff at the bottom. The logistics, the way DC Comics are operating. DC Comics fans right now don't think there's any communication going on between the group editors of Superman, Justice League, Batman. They think there's no cohesion across the line. They don't think the bare minimum is being done as far as communication when it comes to the comic books, and I completely understand it because I agree with them. I don't think they do any of that, and I don't think fans expecting that kind of, of work going into the comics with a shared continuity are really asking too much. In fact, what I would say was suggested there would be the absolute bare minimum. So DC Comics fans, I don't think they're asking too much. 
for less events. I don't think they're asking too much, stating that DC Comics editorial, the creative teams, should be working together to create their cohesive shared continuity. That should be the bare-ass minimum of what DC Comics are doing when they're putting out their 50 to 60 titles in a month, half of which, of course, are Batman. Can you imagine that the, the job the Batman group editor has just to keep all that in line? There's no way he can even keep a hold of all of it. Definitely some of that is going out to the Justice League group editor, the Superman group editor, and all that kind of stuff. They need to start communicating behind the scenes, and that is absolutely an enormous issue with DC Comics right now. Let's hear from the next responder. Real Human Person 001 says, Stop doing a massive crisis every year. They have been worse and worse since Blackest Night. If I have to sit through one more multiverse event, so help me God. Stop giving Batman and his family so many series and focus on the thousands of other characters readers can enjoy. Focus on building the universe and character rather than just highlighting the Justice League members and whoever is getting a movie. More random series giving the Charlton characters some shine. Let's see what the JSA are doing. Let's do a Cosmic Space series with Captain Comet and Adam Strange stories. Heck, they want a space cabbie, but in the back, just for humor, bring back detective stories with actual detectives like Question or Detective Chip instead of Batman just being a brooding know-it-all for two or three titles. War books, Western books, magic mystery books. DC has a massive library of stuff that's worked, and they refuse to use any of it. I want to see less first appearances and more developments for their actual cast. We don't get a concrete, stable origin for Power Girl or Donna Troy, but we have to get a new character constantly changing up the DC mythos. Make the Phantom Stranger and Spectre mean something again. They were massive players in DC, but now are both punching bags for whatever new BBG DC likes in the moment. More self-contained Elseworld stories. Stop relying on variants to sell books. Pay the writers, artists enough the first time, and I don't know, actually market their own books instead of relying on movies and TV shows to build interest in their characters. There are a couple of really interesting things in there that I want to concentrate on. First, we'll talk about the glut of variant characters of the characters in DC Comics. It has gotten so out of hand, it's not even funny. How many Batman family-related characters can we have at this point? How many Robins does he actually need to be active in the DC Comics universe at one freaking time? There's like 15 of them now. Not only that, we have more than one Batman. That is absolutely ridiculous. There doesn't need to be multiple versions of every hero in the DC Comics universe, especially Batman. The only one that it really makes sense for to have multiple heroes with the same title at the same time is Green Lantern. Because that's not like a hero designator. That isn't a very unique origin. That's, a, that's an interstellar police force. It makes sense that there would be more than one Green Lantern. There are thousands of Green Lanterns. But there really shouldn't be more than like one or two human lanterns at a time. That's what made Hal Jordan special. If you go back to the origin of the story, when he gets the ring, they won't accept him because humans aren't evolved enough yet to actually get into the Green Lantern Corps. No one believes that he can actually do it. He doesn't have the will for it. And all of a sudden, we've got like eight human lanterns all at the same time. It's time for a culling of the herd. How many goddamn Flash characters do we need? at the exact same time. How many different versions of Wonder Woman do we really need? We have multiple versions of Green fucking Arrow. Green Arrow cannot carry his own solo title anymore, yet we've got multiple versions of that hero walking around with Red Arrow, Hawk, and Green Arrow. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's gone so far, they just need to kill them all off and start over. If you're gonna do a reboot, at least do that. The other excellent point that real human person there points out is DC Comics had something that was very unique to them that Marvel Comics just could not duplicate. And that was Vertigo Comics. Where yes, there were some superheroes in Vertigo, but mostly it was just a genre line of different types of stories that DC Comics were doing very well. And they've kind of lost that, and there's nowhere to put it anymore. Recently, there was a really great series from Philip Kennedy Johnson. It was original stuff. It was called The Last God. That should have been a Vertigo comic book, but instead it ended up being DC Black Label. But what is Black Label? Black Label is just the stuff that they put when they don't know where else to put it. There's nothing special about that. No one knows what a Black Label book is anymore. And they've retroactively gone out and tried to make everything that was Vertigo Black Label now, and it's just really confusing. DC Comics doesn't only have to produce great superhero comics. With the amount of comic books they're actually putting out in a given month, they could actually take a few chances. And I mentioned, you know, recently they did with The Last God, but they need to bring Vertigo back. They need to revitalize it 
but not with any dipshits like they did last time without any stupid agendas. Go out there and find the best new creators that you can that maybe aren't right for DC superhero comics, but would do great with genres outside of superheroes. Ray and B is struggling on detective comics right now. He's not really a superhero comic book writer. Ray and B should be the number one name for DC Comics Vertigo label. Jeff Lemire should be doing stuff with the Vertigo label. Actually, Swamp Thing Green Hell, you know, should be a Vertigo title. It kind of makes sense, even though Swamp Thing is technically within DC continuity right now. They've really pigeonholed themselves when they did that Vertigo 20th anniversary and just destroyed the line. They need to bring it back, but actually with the purpose to tell stories that aren't superheroes, but with the best writers possible, and they did not do that last time. Next up is matches. No more crisis, period. No more flashpoints or new 52s or zero hours either. You want new readers? Stop making what's canon change every two years. Stop making the canon the centerpiece. People want the characters, not the maintenance. I've seen the JSA come back to life five times in the last decade. I do not care. I would keep making Super Sons. Continuity be damned. How on earth was Justice League demoted to a minor book after Justice Doom War? How did it go from the vehicle for running out the end of the Bendis deal? I understand DC is trying something different with Titans right now, but sheesh, it's the goddamn Justice League. I would put an S tier, superstar tier, creative team on Titans. That shit rivaled X-Men back in the day. My Hero Academia is legit eating your lunch, doing your old routine. You need an incontinuity book aimed at younger folks that makes them feel like they're reading something important, not another relaunch with a younger writer that gets the cane after 18 issues. Fourth pillar of that shit. I would also exempt it from all line-wide events because it should be uncomplicated. To readers used to manga, they need to stop killing D-tier titans. I would lean even harder on the young adult and kids book. They should be the on-ramp to comics for entire generations. Scholastic book bears are the sauce. I would refocus DC Black Label to be more out of DCU content like Nice House on the Lake and less endless prestige bat books. Speaking of endless bat books, I actually think Batman Urban Legends is the way you deal with the dozens of bat fame who can't support an ongoing but people want to see. I would relaunch it with a Gotham Knightsy kind of name and make it on par with Batman and tech in terms of importance to the line. I'd probably fuck around and try and bring Vertigo back and lose a ton of money because WB would want movie rights to the new IPs and Image offers a better deal. That is absolutely how Vertigo became unimportant. <laughs> uh, bring back Young Animal. No, that's that's stupid. Bring back the Dark Line, Animal Man, Hellblazers, Atana, Justice League, Dark Swamp Thing. Every generation of the fan has their Green Lantern. There needs to be a better way to have Hal, John, Guy, Kyle, Simon, Jessica, and Joe have some page time. A big Green Lantern core anthology series or something. A collected editions apartment that doesn't stop reprinting books midway through the run, leading to people not picking up volume ones, leading to less runs collected. More omnibuses, more trades, more compendiums. We're definitely seeing a lot of commonality when it comes to the suggestions for what DC Comics should be doing. Less events, less Batman, more obscure characters, maybe a few genres that are different here and there. Let the creators actually cook. Stop interrupting them with non-stop events. But this one brings up a good point about kids' comic books. That is the gateway into the comic book fandom nowadays. Unfortunately, there is no spinner rack at your local drugstore. There's no spinner rack at the grocery store. Kids can either get in there through digital or they're gonna find their way into comic books through Scholastic. And trust me, a lot of kids are reading comic books today because of Scholastic, but almost none of it is because of DC Comics offerings on the kids market. While they are putting limited amounts of kids books out there that the kids can get their hands on, and some of them are, them are somewhat successful, like the Beast Boy and Raven stuff. Almost any kid that gets into DC Comics through these books will not recognize the heroes when they make it to the actual DC Comics themselves. And that is an enormous, enormous failure on DC Comics part. There should be a graduation. You come in, you read the kids stuff that's about Batman and the Titans and a Superman and all that stuff, but it familiarizes you with the character. Maybe not the darkest aspects of the character. Maybe not some of the convoluted histories of the characters, but the bare basics of who the characters are and then you graduate up, maybe to animation, and eventually into DC Comics themselves. A lot of the versions of the heroes that you're going to see in these kids' comics, they have nothing to do with the actual heroes themselves, other than having like the same name, like this, the same legitimate name and hero name. Then after that, there just isn't a lot in common with the stuff you see in the kids' market versus what they're actually going to graduate to. Far too many young readers nowadays are discovering comics through Dogman, through Reign of Telgmire. Then they're moving on from that into manga, into anime, and they're bypassing DC and Marvel Comics altogether. And if they do go to the DC Comics materials that are available, 
if they ever actually make it to DC Comics themselves, they will not recognize the characters. It does not make sense, and it's not going to be a winning strategy in the long haul. There needs to be some type of synergy between the kids' graphic novels, the animation, the video games, the comic books, and even the movies themselves. So when people say, you know what, I've been a Batman fan since I was seven years old, when they finally get to real Batman, they know who the character is. They aren't going, what? Bruce Wayne's not Asian? What the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on here? What do you mean? Batman's not gay. DC and Marvel Comics strategies to find the new audience that they've been looking for for a decade now have absolutely failed. They need to rely on the characters. The characters are the key. The universes are the key, and they are effing them up at every single turn. Get back to highlighting these great characters, and that next audience will come and find you. Trust me. These are the last suggestions that I'm going to cover here, uh, but there are hundreds of others. There are so many in here, it's not even funny. Jake Ben 100 says, Create a continuity character Bible and require consistent adherence to it by writers. Use Black Label to produce more non-superhero graphic novels by DC creators. Specifically, give Black Label first look rights over otherwise any projects DC exclusive creators are developing. Have the Justice League be more cosmic while the Titans are the go-to team for Earthborn threats. Have a large roster with at least five to six core members. Use backup issues to tell one and done stories about the reserve members. Meanwhile, we see the main league travel into space, make treaties and peace arrangements with other alien worlds to keep the Earth safe from invasions and threats. Uh, I'm sorry, buddy. I don't want to see the Justice League negotiating treaties. I want to see him kicking ass and taking names. Send Flash into space to uncover the cosmic origins of the Speed Force. Joined by the Green Lantern. Bruce Wayne becomes Mayor of Gotham. <laughs> Keep Bat titles to the following. Batman, Detective, Nightwing, Batgirls, Catwoman, Batwoman, and Red Hood. Maybe one or two Batman miniseries, but that's it. Have Red Hood adopt a no-killing rule and make a series a deep personal journey. Have Red Hood adopt a no-killing rule and make a series a deep personal journey. Story that sees him become the new leader of the League of Shadows, which he turns into a crime-fighting organization. Recruit and maintain high quality talent with three-year exclusive contract no events or crisis for at least three years increase marketing of books and beg warner brothers discovery to play comic book trailers in theaters as the coming attractions there are a lot of trends that are going through a lot of these suggestions people have event fatigue they don't want any more reboots they don't want any more events they want less batman titles and one thing i thought was interesting in there they want dc writers the good writers to be on exclusive contracts so they can give their best efforts towards dc characters this is something that is plaguing dc comics when the pandemic happened, they basically shredded all their exclusive contracts. They only kept a couple of people. I think it was Bendis, and I think it was Scott Snyder. Obviously, they're not with DC Comics anymore. We know that Tom Taylor is exclusive, but other than that, I'm not really sure. Maybe Tom King, but they have almost no exclusive creators anymore which means that all the creators working on the most important DC characters, Chip Zdarsky on Batman, have no incentive to give their best effort towards DC Comics. They're all doing their own creator-owned stuff. They're all working for Marvel. They are all incentivized to hold their best ideas and use it for their own Substack and other types of creator-owned projects that they're working on right now. DC Comics needs to give a damn good page rate and find the best exclusive creators that they can get into the DC Comics family and really highlight these characters because the creative right now is ground zero for the destruction of DC Comics. They have so many bad writers, it's not even funny. And I understand DC Comics editorial is an enormous issue as well, but there ain't very many of them. And if you're going to have a real writer succeed at DC Comics, it's going to have to be in spite of DC Comics editorial because I do not see them hiring anyone better anytime soon. It's going to be on the writers to do the best job they can with limited oversight and interference from DC Comics editorial. They really need to go out there and cultivate good creators. They found one. His name is Jeremy Adams. But they also found Megan Fitzmartin. They also found Stephanie Phillips. They also found Tim Sheridan. And a host of other Z-level talent creators that are absolute dog shit. You've got to get your house in order. And I'm going to say it right now. Just look at what people were suggesting. None of that is out of the question. None of that is over the top. Almost every suggestion made there, specifically when it talks to processes and logistics, are at a minimum what DC Comics should have been doing anyway. And no one thinks they're doing any of that. That's an enormous problem. Now, I am not out of the helping DC Comics with a few suggestions game. In fact, a little over a year ago, these were my five ideas, five ways I would fix and clean up DC Comics to save the publisher. This is almost five years old and they all maintain to this day. You don't see the video here. There's also a link in the video description.